I think there is every reason for Kenyans to be outraged because we have been treated to a charade in the form of an election. Kenya's disputed election last year gave way to violent protests and cost at least 33 people their lives. Then, just two weeks ago, following months of bitterness, President Uhuru Kenyatta and his rival, opposition leader Raila Odinga, made peace. But now revelations about Cambridge Analytica's alleged role in Kenya's election risk turning things upside down. Just ahead of Kenya's election last August, Facebook did something unusual. It took out a full-page ad warning citizens about the spread of fake news. Surveys that summer had already indicated it was a problem for a majority of Kenyans during the presidential campaign. And on social media, voters saw plenty of attack ads against opposition candidate Raila Odinga. Even today, no one knows for sure where these ads came from. Cambridge Analytica has denied promoting, quote, negative content in the election. But footage from the British Channel 4 investigation is raising questions about the firm's role in the vote. And what you have done in Kenya? We have rebranded the entire party twice, written their manifesto, done two rounds of 50,000 so surveys. Huge amounts of research, analysis, messaging. I mean, then we'd write all the speeches and we'd stage the whole thing. So just about every element of his campaign. Okay. Now, campaign officials for Raila Odinga are asking President Kenyatta's political party how deep Cambridge Analytica's involvement goes. I think there is every reason for Kenyans to be outraged because we have been treated to a charade in the form of an election. I've dared them to make public the contract that they entered into with Cambridge Analytica so that we can look at the veracity of that contract, what were the terms of reference, and the degree and length of participation of Cambridge Analytica in the Kenyan election. Cambridge Analytica told Vice News that it rejects allegations that it, quote, conducted a negative media campaign in the recent Kenyan election and that it, quote, did not promote any fabricated news stories. For Kenyatta's part, his spokesman maintains that the campaign didn't have a direct relationship with Cambridge Analytica and downplayed data mining as an American issue. This is something to do with Trump. This is something to do with the Brexit. Um, for us in this uh, particular environment, it is, is a non-issue for us. Mining data from, say, Facebook to determine how, say, for example, people will actually vote based on psychoanalysis uh, information that has been gleaned from Facebook is kind of far-fetched. But in Kenya, the internet reaches lots of people, at least two-thirds of the population, according to one study last year. And the number of Facebook users there is growing. What worries some experts is the lack of regulations on how people's data can be used. So because Kenya has no data protection laws, it means that Companies like Cambridge Analytica could have been gathering any kind of information with no limitation and no safeguards. Kenyan citizens can't exercise the rights that they would have if data protection was there, such as asking the companies to tell them what data has been collected. Purden says the problem could be compounded in countries like Kenya, where ethnic conflicts have turned deadly. The country has a history of political violence and very tense elections that have been run along ethnic lines. The kind of intensive data analytics and data gathering that a company like Cambridge Analytica does is actually untested ground that's very risky. 